Hello guys. I'm Sean. And welcome to ST Animals. We're all aware that a life lost in nature provides nutrients for others to grow and carry on. But the limelight normally goes to the larger scavenger species. So what happens when these larger species aren't around? Where does the body go? What happens to the bones? Well the reason we're not up to our waist in carcasses. The unsung heroes of the micro world. One of the most common is our well-known woodlice. Throughout the course of this video that took place over 10 days, we'll find out. Found seemingly anywhere and everywhere in Britain. Under pots, bags, wood, you name it. Harmless to us, yet fascinating in their own right. Let's meet the team. Giant orange woodlice, the most prolific breeder. The largest species here, but peaceful all the same. Tropical grey woodlice. Visually similar to many British species. However adapted for a warmer, more tropical environment. And finally dwarf white woodlice. Often confused with the babies of the giant orange woodlice, the smaller species often hiding more than the others but proving to be very successful with their numbers swelling. All living peacefully alongside each other. Springtails and bumblebee millipedes also share these soils, but we'll save that for another video. Let's begin. A pre-euthanized chick a large protein source will act as our carcass. So it's taken a few hours to drum up some interest, and a few search for a good point to start. It's likely they'll attempt to create an entrance or two, and work from the inside in order to provide some cover. Overnight the excavation began. The eyes seem to be a good starting point, often adored by many animals. Holding good nutrition, are they tasty? Don't ask me, I'm not going to find out. But much to my surprise, instead of having to deal with the feathers, Many have opted to go for the legs. I expected this to be consumed last due to its thicker layer of skin, resulting in a much tougher job. For the rest of the day, the carcass appears to have been abandoned. But what could have caused this? Well, woodlice are a nocturnal species, meaning they often favour the cover of darkness and cooler temperatures. During the day, pillbugs will often find cover to hide in a nice damp and humid area. But a protein source like this isn't a common occurrence. Would they really give up the chance of another animal taking it away? Surely not. Then it occurred to me. Maybe they're smarter than I've given them credit for. In the day, most areas of Britain, lifting up pots, wood, almost anything in your back garden will have woodlice underneath making their home. Whereas if asked to go out at night, 
they'd be running around almost everywhere in search for food. It's actually amazing they don't venture inside properties more often. You always hear of ant invasions, but never woodlice. These shy creatures aren't as bold or confident, often running from one cover to another. So surely enough, just like their wild counterparts, remaining undercover to avoid sitting exposed. A rather unexpected but intelligent move. The feathers will help retain moisture, while the body reduces the likelihood of both light and heat. Impressive. I didn't think they'd abandon it like that. Meat protein isn't always the easiest to come by, especially not in this quantity. Come evening, we're back on top and making quick progress. The whole population is aware of the food source at this point, and almost seems to be taking it in turns. Intervals of feeding. Now, work continued seemingly faster each day, but unfortunately they opened a large cavity in the centre of the body. It was quite gruesome, and I didn't expect them to make such a large entrance. I intended the video to remain somewhat peaceful, with as little gore as possible. So I've decided to skip a close-up view and continue our progress with Day 8. As seen, little but feathers and bones remain. That being said, why aren't there more bones? Well, the exoskeleton of woodlice consists largely of calcium. So these little critters, like many others, often consume and break down bones in order to gain extra calcium to maintain a healthy layer of armour. Even the feathers seem far and few between. Have some of these been consumed as well? Approaching day 9, it's clear to see I won't need to clean up after them. Only remnants of the skeleton remain, with the vast majority already consumed. Almost turning this enclosure into a graveyard. The crew keep working to make use of the remainder. But what didn't go unnoticed? The strange greyish lump of matter. What is that? It looks horrible. But the woodlice are swarming it, there's certainly no lack of interest. I'm really not sure what this is. I can only guess it's a mix of feathers and remaining skin. but they still seem interested and seem to be getting something out of it, so it can stay for now. A closer look at the bone shows just what's left. The beak consumed, leaving just the V-shaped jaw behind, and the bones of various limbs. These would all be put back to let them finish up. But it's just amazing how clean they are. Nothing goes to waste. It's the little things that are often overlooked in nature. The important role these creatures and many others alike play in transporting the nutrients of a carcass and skeleton back into the soil for use by other organisms. Now I'm not going to start singing the circle of life, but you get the gist. Anyway, 
that about does it for this video. A slight change up and much more editing than my previous videos. But it's been a nice change I think, a step in the right direction. These past weeks I've been working on some upgrades, an attempt at paradise. But for who? Well in the ST Animals logo, at the start of this video, that's Charlie. Not yet featured on this channel. But stick around because I've got some great plans ahead.